Coming up on today's News Valdosta, a police dog attacks a suspected drug dealer and sends him to the hospital. And your local police want your help in solving a recent burglary. Bonaconate has our weather and Candace Weaver will bring us the best in local sports. Your News Valdosta starts now. Welcome to News Valdosta. I'm Brittany Williams. And I'm Joshua Harrell. Valdosta police say push came to shove yesterday when a suspect in a narcotics case pushed his luck and shoved an officer. Investigators say 42-year-old Willie Hunter was suspected of selling drugs near Hudson Street when a police officer caught up with him. Hunter allegedly shoved the officer and then the drug dog at the scene attacked Hunter in an attempt to defend the officer. After sustaining bites from the dog, Police say Hunter ran away and was found hiding under a house. He received treatment for his, bite, for his bites at the South Georgia Medical Center. After his release, Hunter was charged with possession with intent to distribute cocaine along with other charges and has been taken to Lowndes County Jail. The Valdosta Department Burglary Unit is asking for public assistance in the search for Eugene Whitfield. Whitfield is a 21-year-old African-American male and Valdosta resident identified as the offender in a January burglary this year. If you have any information of his whereabouts, police ask that you contact them and they stress that you can remain anonymous. A young man charged with murder is asking to appear in court as a juvenile. Brunswick author authorities say DeMarquis Elkins and Dominique Lang were charged with the murder of a baby a year ago. 13-month-old 13 13 month Antonio Santiago was fatally shot in the face while his mother in what appeared to be an attempted street robbery. The two teens have been charged as adults, but now Lang is requesting to be tried as a juvenile. His, author his attorney says his, a client, his client is 1,000% not guilty. The attorney says Lang was not the one who pulled the trigger and is trying to avoid the murder charge. Georgia law doesn't allow juvenile courts to hear murder cases. There is talk of moving the trial, but the baby's mother is insisting that the teen stand trial for her son's death. Police in Dawson have arrested four people for involvement in a gang-related beating. The alleged offenders were arrested after a video of the beating reportedly was uploaded to YouTube and later presented to the police. The beating was believed to be a gang initiation ritual. The suspects have been charged with battery, aggravated assault, and two counts of participating in criminal gang activity. A bad Austin man says he was robbed in his home shortly before 6.30 Sunday night. Police reports say a Hispanic male, age 50, allowed two men and two women into his home. It was reported that the man had a sexual agreement with one of the women. Police say when the victim went into his bedroom, one of the men took a pair of his pants with his wallet inside. The victim tried to fight and retrieve his belongings from the assailant, but the third man intervened. Authorities say the four people escaped with the pants and $150 in cash. A mother of four has been charged with involuntary manslaughter after a fire claimed three of her children. Kalitha Williams of Macon was sentenced Monday to six years in prison, followed by 40 years on probation. Williams told police she was visiting her boyfriend when the fire in her home started. Her children, ages three, seven, nine, and ten, were left unattended and later found huddled together in the home. Three of the children died of smoke inhalation. The three-year-old was the sole survivor. In some lighter news, the Lowndes County Commissioners declared yesterday as Purple Heart Proclamation Day. That makes Lowndes only the third county in the state to honor all of its county citizens who have received the Purple Heart Medal for injuries incurred in military action. When we, co when we come back, Valdosta Schools plan another meeting about new elementary school districts. And the Valdosta High School team will represent the USA in international competition. Stay with us. All right, give me a spot. You know my motto, safety first. They could be dangerous. I think we should call animal control. Animal control? To be safe. Don't worry. Just... I got this. It's a new motto. 
You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Valdosta State University. Encouraging. In-depth inquiry. Hands-on experience. Service and involvement. And a global view. While offering a beautiful residential campus. Over 100 fields of study. Graduate and online degrees. And championship athletics. All in a warm and friendly community. Get connected and involved. Do more, become more. Valdosta State University. Welcome back to News Valdosta. Valdosta City Schools may face a new redistricting map for its elementary schools. A map was proposed this past Monday night by the Board of Education. It's redistricting season again for elementary schools in the Valdosta City School District. The Board of Education released a new district map this week that will redraw district lines for each elementary school. The new redistricting are, are designed to help balance out overcrowded and underutilized classrooms. Such is the case with S.L. Mason Elementary, which currently holds 881 students, but was built to serve 1,125 students. More discussion about the proposed redistricting will continue tomorrow night at 7 o'clock in S.L. Mason Elementary's gymnasium. Six Lowndes High School students have made a name for themselves by earning a spot in the VEX World Robotics Competition in Anaheim, California. Originally, the team competed against the 80 best teams in Georgia, where they found themselves taking home the third place spot. The team will not only be representing Georgia, but also the entire United States in the competition. There will be over 400 teams from, the, from 28 other countries competing for the title of best robotics team in the world. The competition will be held at the Anaheim Convention Center from April 23rd through the 26th. The Terrell Animal Shelter is overwhelmed this morning. It says local residents can help them reduce overcrowding at the animal shelter. In the last month, the animal shelter picked up several dozen dogs and is planning a special adoption day to find good homes for them. The animal shelter will have an adopt-a-thon later this month to find foster and permanent homes before it's too late for these animals. The shelter hopes adopters come forward so these dogs won't have to be euthanized. The adopt-a-thon will be March 22nd from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. in the tractor supply on Leto Road. For more information about the program, contact the Terrell Animal Shelter. Some educators say art is the best form of medicine for young students. Counselors at Cross Creek Elementary School are using art to help teachers and classmates cope with the death of Thomas County with the death of a Thomas County fourth grader. Jay Copeland died in a fire Sunday morning and students are reported to be very shaken up about the incident. Teachers say art is the most powerful tool of expression and that each and every stroke made by the students hold a special meaning to their hearts. Copeland is remembered at the school as a standout student and all the art that the students made in class will be given to the family as a keepsake. Animal rights activists are mobilizing a fight against a bill to legalize animal abuse. In the state of Georgia, it's illegal to capture wild animals without a permit, but House Bill 423 would let hunters trap raccoons and use them to train coon hunting dogs. Hunters could put raccoons in cages, hide them, and let the dogs track them. The bill passed the House overwhelmingly, and opponents are trying to keep it from passing the Senate. Bainbridge Memorial Hospital in Maynard announced yesterday that it will be cutting 22 jobs from the facility. The hospital believed that the, cure were part, the cuts were a part of an ongoing effort to focus on ways to be more effective and efficient in the delivery of health care. Cynthia Green lived and worked at the Bainbridge most of her life and says she's disappointed that the employees are losing their jobs. The hospital says the decision was necessary to continue its mission to provide quality, effective, and efficient health care to those in need. Up next on News Valdosta, we'll take a look at today's weather and find out more about chilly temperatures tomorrow. Then we'll take a look at your local sports, so stay with us. Thanks for calling the GED Pep Talk Center. Jerry Stiller speaking. Your level seven in your face pep talk. I can keep pushing you. Believe me, I'm good at it. But at some point, you're gonna need to start pushing yourself. See, once you've got your GED diploma, You'll feel so good about yourself. You tell them. You can't change your past, but you can definitely change your future. That makes me so happy, I'm ready to bust out a dance. Mr. Trejo, can I transfer this guy to you? My gentle technique isn't really working. You need something a little more... Persuasive? Yes! 
you listen, and you listen good. Hey, where's my sandwich? Terry? Terry? Take it from me to King DMC. It's a real cool thing to get your GED. Get that diploma! Now hold on and we'll find you three GED classes. Capiche? Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk and find free classes at yourged.org. Welcome back to News About Asta. Look, it looks like we're in, in for some near freezing temperatures tomorrow night. So let's take a look at the weather with Bonna Conante. Bonna? Thanks, guys. We had some beautiful weather throughout Georgia these past days, and that brought people outdoors. Last night, rain kept most people indoors, and few were seen out with umbrellas. We had some fog this morning, but it was more or less gone about 8.30. Now you can put away those umbrellas. Despite the partly cloudy skies, we are expecting a high temperature today of 67 degrees. That's cooler than it has been, but still pretty nice. Tonight, we are looking at a low of 40 degrees with more partly cloudy skies and 10% chance of rain. So if you plan on going out, you might want to wear a light jacket and maybe a scarf. Tomorrow, we're going to be Tomorrow, we're going, tomorrow we are going to have some clear sunny weather, although it will be even cooler than today. We are expecting a high of 56 degrees with sunny skies and no chance of rain. But watch out for tomorrow's night low of 33. Now, let's take a look at the UV index. Today's UV index will be at 7. That's more than high enough to get you burned. So keep your sunscreen handy, and if possible, limit your time in, sun, in the sunshine. The pollen count is high and will remain high for the next couple of days. A rating of 9 out of 12 for today, and almost 10 for tomorrow. So you allergy sufferers need to take precaution. If possible, stay indoors and avoid outdoor activities. That's all for our weather, and back to you at the news desk. Thanks, Bonna. When we come back, Candace Weaver has a look at local sports, so don't go away. Did you know kids who play outdoors have healthier lungs? Totally. I did. Did you know that boys that play with dolls make better husbands? My son has lots of dolls. But did you know terry cloth diapers breathe better? I did. Mm -hmm. It's totally true. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you know that strollers have the right of way on the sidewalk? Yes. Yep, I did. Did you guys Did know? you know that kids who eat breakfast have higher GPAs? Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's actually what I was going to say. Did you know babies should never touch silver? It's really bad for them. I knew that. Did you guys know that statistically friendly kids have more friends? Mm-hmm, yeah. That's obvious. Did you know most people think they're using the right car seat for their kid, but they're not? Parents who really know it all know for sure that their child is in the right seat at the right age and size. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to make sure your child is protected. I'm putting that on my blog. I just put it in mine. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to Energy Star light bulbs, and you'll realize just how much cash you are really burning through. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Welcome back. Now let's go to Candace Weaver for local sports. Candace? Thanks. The Lowndes County baseball team is moving forward with, their, with a win against Lee County Trojans. The Vikings, who are now 3-6 for the season, relied on great pitching from Andy Perkins, the second reliever of the night, sitting down 12 out of 14 batters. Perkins had three innings of three men up and three men down. The Vikings' bats were also in great form as they won 12-9. to 
The Vikings will play Tiff County at home this Friday afternoon at 4.30 p.m. in a region game that could snowball for Vikings into their first winning streak of the season. In baseball action, the Albany, the Albany Cavs hammered bases and cleared doubles in the bottom of the seventh to take the win over East Georgia Tuesday. The Cavs trailed the, the Bobcats 6-2 in the bottom of the seventh. With no one on the two outs, Peyton Mann then loaded the bases for the Cavs to move to 12-11 and 8-1. The Cavs will travel to Swainsboro this weekend for a three-game series. The Deerfield Windsor's baseball team took, a, took on Mount DeSales yesterday. Deerfield Windsor entered the bottom of the sixth inning, trailing 3-2, to two, but the DW's Knights offensive offense exploded in the sixth inning to take the, lane, the lead over Mount D sales for good. DWS now moves to 2-0 to zero for the season with 11 wins and 4 losses. The Dice take the field again against Terrell Academy next Saturday. St. Lee answered an early Valdosta State score, and the Lions never t looked back Tuesday at Southard Stadium in St. in St. Leo, Florida. VSU tacked on a run in the seventh when that when Thomas scored on the wild pitch. St. Leo responded with a run in the eighth on a blazer error. Valdosta State, which le which heads to West Alabama on Saturday to open a three-game Golf South Conference series, received two hits apiece from Heyman, Dowdell, Goud, Thomas, and lead and leadoff hitter Matthew Fears. Witten led the Lions with four hits, while Perez, Chris Newcomb, and T and Bobby Twitty all had two hits. The Blue Devils can't. Get the Blue Devils can't just get the championship until the celebration parade. The Tiff County Devils celebrated with their biggest fans yesterday to congr congratulate the GHSA 6A boys basketball champs. The Blue Devils will take Wheeler Saturday night to, the win to win the title. The win earned the Blue Devils their first state title since 1969. Valdosta State competed in, t in its second consecutive tournament yesterday losing to Barry University. The Miami-based defending national champion and current number one, Barry relied on his preparation en route to another tournament win in 2014, First Federal Southeastern Collegiate. The Barry Buccaneers won the VSU-hosted event by six strokes by shooting 289 in the final round and 861 for the tournament lead by Scott Sem Smyers. 215. With the win, Barry solidified his hold on the number one spot in the country a week before winning St. Edward's Invitational in Austin, Texas. Even though the Blazers were not able to pull out a victory Tuesday, they can't be disappointed by a fourth place finish in a tournament in which 10 out of the 18 competing teams entered play ranked in the top 25. The Valdosta State men's tennis team trampled all over the Ferris State Bulldogs in their second GSC matchup. The game was held Tuesday afternoon on the VSU tennis course, and the Blazers won 8-1. The match started with doubles, where each of the six pairings won against their Bulldog opponents. Yim Kim fell short in the first singles match, giving Ferris their only point. The last three singles matches were played in favor of the Blazers. Valdosta will play his next match at home on March 25th. We come back, we will tell you about some upcoming events you'll want to be aware of. So stay with us. Valdosta State University. Quality academics. Caring faculty mentors. A beautiful campus. Opportunities for involvement, leadership, and service. Championship athletics, spirit and pride. Discover your opportunities. Valdosta State University.
Clean kitchen surfaces, utensils, and hands with soapy water. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Welcome back to News About Austin. According to the Multiple, multiple scolio, scolio, Sclerosis Foundation, increased understanding of MS has led to the development of many new treatments that target both the disease process and its many symptoms. For 2014, Walk MS, a walk to benefit those with multiple sclerosis, hopes to reach its goal of raising $13,000. If the goal is reached, 78% of the money will go toward helping families who need financial assistance, conducting new drug research and scholarships for MS students. The walk begins at 10 a.m. On, on March 29th at the Albany Municipal Auditorium. There is no fee to sign up and supporters can join and donate when they can. March was first de declared col colorectal cancer awareness month nationally in 2000. Researchers say this event offers a unique opportunity and is to educate people about colorectal cancer. That's what will happen at the Georgia Wing Fest on this Saturday at the Exchange Club Fairgrounds in Albany. A 10 feet high and 20 feet long giant colon will be at the entrance of the event for locals to walk through and see what a normal colon looks like. It's a fun and effective way to educate the community. For more information about the event, visit sgacancer.org. Thanks for watching News Valdosta. I'm Brittany Williams. And I'm Joshua Harrell. Join us again tomorrow.